on the weekend Chinatown is just like a ghost town. You can count the number of people walking on the street. The CBD is reopening, but it's still very, very quiet. There's very few people back working in the office, and if they are, they're working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there's like a three-day work week. Nowhere do I hear in the conversations of businesses you know, planning to get back to previous levels of employment within the city within you know, the next six months or nine months. It's even questionable whether we get back there. So definitely the nature of the CBDs is changing. Well, in the third quarter, GDP contracted by 1.9%. The decline was better than what consensus expected. And what's more, it was also better than what was feared during the lockdowns. The outperforming industries in the September quarter were those industries least sensitive to tighter restrictions and lockdowns. So mining was up there, as was agriculture. The hardest hit industries, not surprisingly, food and accommodation and arts and recreation. 50% of the tourists in Sydney are international. 30% are from interstate. So suddenly, if there's a lockdown, 80% of your market just gone. Our expectation is that we will see solid growth in Australia over next year. But we do have a downside risk that has emerged in the form of the new variant Omicron. Students and working visas, which were going to commence on the 1st of December, will now commence on the 15th of December. We are not processing any student visa because the body is closed. No visited visa as well, so it is very difficult for us. We've lost a lot of labour supply from the closing of the international borders. Areas like hospitality, restaurants, all those sort of industries are actually running at a much lower level of activity than they were pre-COVID, but they have massive labour shortages. The industry essentially shut down in April 2020 and a lot of our workforce left and went overseas, they found other jobs. In this hotel we had 75 staff, we're down to 15 now. Hospitality hours can be unfriendly for some people, some people like it, but you know, the international students really add some flexibility to our operations. We rely heavily on the student visa to do jobs like waiter, waitresses, kitchen hand, cleaner. Hospitality lost a lot of people and they're not coming back in a hurry. So even when the borders reopen, the next day, we're not going to get to the same level of immigration. Like, populations are just going to bounce back to where it was. It's going to have to grow back. So there's going to be this transition phase as well. And there's going to be, a, for, for the least, until mid-next year or even the end of next year, this mismatch on labour and skills and people looking for new opportunities, businesses deciding to train rather than trying to recruit, businesses trying to do more with less people too. I'm looking forward for the borders to reopen so our business will increase. This country rely heavily on the skill visa and we bring in a lot of students, uh, holiday working visa, they will stimulate the economic of this country. Data for the December quarter when it's printed early next year should show that economic activity has bounced back in the current quarter, the December quarter. Pent up demand in New South Wales, Victoria and the ACT has been unleashed into the economy as Australians in these regions have emerged out of lockdown. The rest of Australia has remained resilient, low interest rates, a recovering labour market, elevated consumer confidence and also high household savings which should be run down will help support consumer spending. Yeah, it'll bounce back. Sydney was locked down, our business just disappeared. So we shut it down for uh, July, August, September and reopened in late October. And now we're reopening this weekend is close to full.